Hey, it's JP with Retronyms and welcome back to IMPC Prolog. Here we take a look at the latest features and development progress for IMPC Pro. And it's been a while since I've made one of these, but I'm here today with a major new upgrade to IMPC Pro. Uh, we've been working hard on this with our friends at Akai Professional, and uh, this is IMPC Pro 2. Basically a, a major upgrade in all directions. We've added a ton of new features and some really core new ideas to the app. Um, so let's just dive in. I want to show some of my favorite features, give a tour of some of the major stuff. I obviously can't cover everything here today. Basically, first of all, I want to just describe right off the bat where the, the kind of some of the biggest changes are. Essentially, we've got a new view down here called tracks. And so here you can see a view of all the tracks in the project. We've got a couple MIDI tracks here uh, stacked up. Um, and the reason this is interesting and exciting to me is that we have two new track types. So it, you're no longer just limited to drum tracks. Obviously this is MPC drum tracks, you know, 16 pads is the heart and soul of the thing, but we really wanted to start adding more song making capabilities. So we've added support for audio unit plugins. And so you can add an audio unit track and uh, an audio track. So you can record from mic uh, uh, or line in, that kind of thing to add an audio track. I'm gonna show audio unit tracks first. So basically right here or within, from within the tracks menu, uh, you can hit new track. You can see here there's three choices. Uh, I'm gonna choose an audio unit. And once I have an audio unit, you can tap the uh, program menu essentially uh, to load your audio unit. So this is just the installed audio units I have here. I'm gonna select ISEM made by our good friends at Arturia. Okay, so now ISEM's loaded up and basically if I go over to uh, some of these other views like Tweak, uh, it's a different interface. So if I tab up to uh, this first track or second track, I can see that the Tweak mode is essentially my program editor for my drum tracks, but if I go down to track three, uh, I have my audio unit plugin. So it's a different interface. Uh, essentially, this is like the param tweaking view for this synthesizer. And of course, you've got a keyboard here that you can play on and record notes from here. Um, you have access to all the presets for this audio unit in our program menu, so you can access that from anywhere in the app or uh, load using their built-in preset browser here. Uh, let's see what we got, a couple pads. ISEM's a great sounding synth, so obviously if you're familiar with our keyboard, uh, you can select different octaves, scroll around, and uh, zoom. We also have a uh, scale and key selector here, so you can, you can set the keyboard to a certain scale. Uh, real quick, if you head to the perform view, it's still the MPC interface, so this gives us a uh, MPC style interface to the uh, synthesizer. And that gives us access to things like note repeat, note variation, you know, time correct, all the uh, uh, MPC style uh, recording and, and perform interface. So it's kind of like having an MPC controller controlling your audio unit. And of course you can, you can control it with a standard keyboard as well. Add another uh, track, I'm gonna add a audio track. And so again, if you head over to some of these other views like tweak and perform, it's a different, uh, design. So if I tab up again to drum tracks and then head down to my audio track, you know, here we have a VU and some sort of mixer uh, parameters, access to that kind of stuff. So here I have my uh, essential recording interface. Um, got a little bit of a demo song going. I'm going to go ahead and just bear with me while I uh, torture everybody with a little bit of singing here. I'm going to attach this microphone here to my uh, Focusrite iTrack solo. Um, and essentially, you can see the VU is uh, picking up my uh, mic input. Um, real quick tour of the input options. You know, for any given interface or microphone or whatever, you can select different, the different channels. This has like a, a, a potential stereo channel, even though it's the solo. Um, I'll stick with uh, solo one. You can also select interapp instruments. You can record an interapp instrument into an audio track here. But for now, I'm just gonna record from the mic. Check, check. Uh, okay, so let's give it a whirl. Oh, I'm gonna head over to Porm. You can see you have a live monitor switch. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Demo song, demo song, demo song. 
demo song, demo song, demo song, demo song, demo song. Right. So hopefully that didn't torture you too badly. Uh, but I do want to show a couple things about the audio tracks. Essentially, once you have a recording, demo song. Um, you have the ability to edit things here. So I can hop over to Tracks View, edit it there, edit it in the timeline or in the tweak view. And you have access to several editing options. You can crop the audio, you know, you can split uh, and I'll do that real quick. Uh, you have access to your note grid here so you can snap things onto the grid. Um, you also have amplify, pitch shift and stretch uh, capabilities here. The really exciting thing for me, I'm going to undo some of those changes here. The really exciting thing for me is because of the nice uh, time stretching and warping capabilities of these clips, uh, I can do things like change the tempo of the track and everything will lock in. So check this out. Demo song, demo song, demo song. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, reverb to this just to kind of not have it such raw audio. Demo song, demo song, demo song. Demo song, demo song, demo song, demo song. So you can make adjustments to the song tempo and everything will stay locked in and it's a pretty nice warp. Um, so again, stretching, uh, pitching, that kind of stuff, all available here. Okay, so that's enough of that. Um, basically, that is kind of some of the major new additions. And like the idea here is, you know, if you ever wanted to have a beat that you'd created and bring in, you know, some sort of vocalist to add lyrics on top of that, uh, now you can do it right in IMPC Pro. And, you know, really to go with this feature, what I really wanted to be able to do was set up a song, bunch of sequences, have an arrangement, and be able to lay down vocals across the entire song. So we've expanded and kind of overhauled how song arrangement works. You know, if we go to the song mode tab, it looks kind of the same as an IMPC Pro 1 new color scheme. But, you know, the difference is up here, this play song toggle. It's basically like all in here. And if you ever use uh, tabletop, you'll kind of be familiar with this style where if the song toggle's on, uh, it will play from sequence to sequence. And if it's off, it'll only loop on the current sequence. So you're always kind of in the song, as opposed to IMPC Pro 1, where you had to sort of take your sequences and drag them to like a song playlist. So that means that when you're in the song, if you drag these sequences around, it will rearrange the song. So this is actually where you handle your sequence management, but also song arrangement. So I can add a bunch of sequences, I can clone sequences, and anytime I drag a sequence around, it's rearranging the order of the song and the whole composition. So I did want to mention that because this, the play song toggle is kind of key to the, the workflow now. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the big, some of the big changes, the, the two new track types. Uh, there's a ton of other features, you know, we have uh, four mute groups now. Uh, you can drag and drop folders to pads in order to add all the contents of the folders to your pad. Um, one of my favorite new features is uh, the ability to archive a project. So you can just tap archive. It takes all the sounds, all the MIDI data, the project program files, packs them up to a zip file that you can drag out of iTunes and then put back and import. So then you can import any projects that you've backed up. So this makes the tool a lot more of a pro like level tool where you don't have to worry about keeping all of your projects on the iPad all the time. And then finally, uh, you can also share on YouTube. So we've expanded some of the uh, social capabilities. So YouTube sharing essentially lets you create a mix down and then through audio copy, it will render a video with a, uh, a waveform visualization and uh, a photo that you can choose. So you can share on YouTube now as well as SoundCloud still. So uh, that is a quick tour. There's a ton more features. I'm gonna try to make more videos. We're gonna talk about more of the features as we go. Um, but that's some of, some of the, the key stuff. Um, I also wanted to mention, I guess before I let you go, uh, that one of the goals for IMPC Pro 2 was to reduce the footprint so that it wasn't such a large uh, 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 footprint on your disc on your iPad. Um, so we've included a ton of original new content, but a lot of it is available online from audio copy. So when you get IMPC Pro 2, it unlocks some sound packs in audio copy that are exclusive to IMPC Pro 2. This is the only way you can get them. And it's essentially the included content 
uh, but your, this allows you to download what you want, uh, remove stuff later, and really manage your disk space a little bit better. Um, so I wanna show you how to find those really quick. Essentially, there is a genre in Audio Copy Content Store, which is what we're looking at right now, uh, called IMPC Pro 2 Packs. And if you go to that, these four packs are all available. If you purchase IMPC Pro 2 and have it on the iPad, they will be downloadable for free. And once you download those, you can paste them into your uh, tweak view right here, and it'll bring in all the programs and everything that goes with those. So there's one right there that I pasted earlier. Um, so essentially, that's a great way to get a ton of value out of this thing. You know, we're charging $24.99 for the app, and it comes with uh, those four sound packs plus one built in and another that you can unlock through using the app and Essentially, that's maybe thirty five forty dollars worth of value that you get comes with the app uh, And I think that's a really good value for the twenty five dollars uh, Another thing that I want to mention is for existing customers of IMPC Pro one uh, We're also going to be launching a bundle that allows you to upgrade to IMC Pro 2 for essentially the price of IMC Pro 2 less what you paid for IMC Pro 1. So the bundle's $28. If you bought IMC Pro 1 for uh, $12.99, I think you end up paying, what's the math, Taylor? $15, um, something like that. So, so uh, it's a great way to upgrade without having to pay again for, for something you've already purchased. And with that, I'm gonna leave it. This should be available today. Make sure you look for the bundle. It's called the IMPC Pro 2 Release Bundle. Hey, if you don't own IMPC Pro at all, I guess I would suggest starting with IMPC Pro 2, but if you wanna find a great deal, get the bundle. You can get both for a limited time for a low, low price of $28. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm going to be doing more of these videos, trying to share more about uh, the features and how to use them. Uh, also, I do live streams from time to time. So if you subscribe to Retronyms, uh, you'll get uh, updates about that. Also, make sure to subscribe to Akai Pro uh, here on YouTube. And uh, hey, guys, thanks. I really hope you enjoy this. And uh, that's it. I'm out.